2020 has been a pretty dramatic and intense year when it comes to drought. The impacts that we'll see on water resources, I think, are very real, and we have to be concerned about it in that if we sort of let climate change continue unchecked, the bad years are gonna hurt more as we go forward. Drought is such a multifaceted thing in that it affects different people, different industries, different parts of the state in very different ways. We're a, a headwater state, so the snow that falls in our mountains is, is, is water that doesn't just you know, come to us here in Colorado, but, but goes downstream to so many other different areas. And so what happens with our snow, especially in the winter, uh, you know, matters hugely to water resources, not just here in, in Colorado, but across the much of the West. Really over the last, since 2000 or so, it's been pretty regular droughts and, and pretty intense droughts through that period. You know, a lot of times when people think about drought, especially here in the West, they think of, of situations like the Dust Bowl in the 1930s. And so some droughts look sort of like that, where it's the summer and it hasn't rained in forever. Other droughts are in Colorado are snow droughts in when we don't get the snow we, we expect in the winter. And then that results in, you know, not enough water the next spring and summer. And so that really is where the conversation around water in the West uh, gets started is, is with, the, with the snow that falls in our mountains. In Colorado and the West, um, snowpack is our water resource. We live and die by the water that we get from snowmelt. And what we're seeing is that mountain watersheds are really bellwethers of climate change. They're changing faster and they're changing in different ways um, than other landscapes. So whether it's the ecosystems or the snowpack or the rivers we study, we're hoping to expand that so that we know what our water resources in the West are gonna be moving forward. I'd say 50 is probably right on bat for what we've seen last year, but. Mm -hmm. So specifically nitrogen is one of the nutrients we focus on with this project because it's so essential for plant growth, soil mm -hmm. function, and an isotope is just like a um, specific signature that we're looking for. So if we can look at like a, an isotope of nitrogen, we can partition out where it's coming from mm -hmm. and like what transformations it might have gone through peak water content in the snow, which usually happens in late April here, that's what we're really concerned, at, um, concerned about because that water is gonna be the runoff that feeds our streams, rivers, and reservoirs, and all kinds of water managers need to know how much water to expect in the spring. Yeah. Connected to each other for like six. But by tracking it throughout the midwinter, we get an idea of how year to year um, snowpack varies and the rate at which it accumulates changes throughout the winter so that we get that final end product in the spring. And then we'll take that manually measured depth of water and check it against what the pressure transducer says. The work we do may seem heavily academic, but the end goal is very broad and it's very useful for society because we're talking about the natural systems that sustain humanity and that society has evolved to thrive in. And as those systems change, we want to document and know where we're going so that we're not just in the dark going into a different climate. And that's why it's really important to me to quantify the changes that we're witnessing right now and think about what that's going to mean for a future society.